when all of this took place, uh, the Prophet ﷺ stood up and he said, uh, who will take care of Ka'b ibn Ashraf? Malli bi Ka'b. Who will take care of Ka'b ibn Ashraf? And so, uh, uh, because he has harmed or irritated Allah and His Messenger. فَقَدْ آذَى اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ yeah, The, the آذَى, آذَى here means to, to, not to harm because Allah is never harmed, but He has irritated. He has, you know, uh, uh, basically gone beyond the bounds here. And so, Muhammad ibn Maslama stood up and he said, I will do it, O Messenger of Allah. Muhammad ibn Maslama was from the Aus. And Ka'b had, before, uh, before in the days of Jahiliya, remember the Aus and the Banu Nadir were one. Right? And of course, this is of his wisdom that he didn't want a Khazraji to do it, or else this would bring up black, bad blood. You understand the point here that the Khazraj and the Banu Nadir already have problems from pre Islam, whereas the Aus and the Banu Nadir don't have any problems. So, Muhammad ibn Muslim, being one of the senior of the Aus, said, I will do it, and then if he does it, there can be no problems between the Aus and the Khazraj, I mean, sorry, the Aus and the Banu Nadir, because they were one in the days of. Uh, Jahiliya. Remember, we talked about this, right? The, the Yehudi tribes had allied, and, and so the, the alliances played a big role here. So, somebody that had already allied with Ka'b in the days of Jahiliya, he's the one who volunteered in order to save the potential of the Jahili civil war being resurrected. You see the point, right? So, Muhammad Maslama uh, volunteered to do it. According to Ibn, Ibn Hisham, for three days after this, Muhammad Ibn Maslama stopped eating and drinking. Until finally somebody came to the Prophet to tell him that Muhammad al-Maslama is not eating and drinking. So he visited him, he said, what is the matter? So he said, O Messenger of Allah, I promised you something, and then I realized I might not be able to fulfill that promise. And so in his anxiety, basically he's so anxious, can you imagine? Like, he got so worried that I promised you i do it, and then I realized, what if I can't? How am I going to then basically make up for this, right? Remember, he's a rich man, he has his own fortress, he's well guarded, he has an entourage. How am I going to do this? And so the Prophet ﷺ said, all you need to do is try. I'm not asking you to, you know, success is with Allah Azza wa Jal, you have to try. That's all. Uh, and so this calmed him down obviously, because he was thinking, what if I'm not able to do it? I'm in big trouble then. Uh, and so, uh, he said, in that case, O Messenger of Allah, allow me to say something. Meaning, you have to allow me to say things that I don't mean. Allow me to say something. And so the Prophet said, Say as you like. Say as you like. So Muhammad ibn Maslama then called upon Ka'b in his, let's say in his office hours, i.e. at a time when is clearly nothing can be done. He called upon Ka'b, there were other people sitting there. He said to Ka'b, look I have something very private I need to talk to you with. So they went to a corner. And uh, he said, so now uh, Muhammad al Maslama is saying to Ka'b, Muhammad is saying to Ka'b that this man, meaning the Prophet ﷺ, has come and caused us irritation for the last years, few years. And the Arabs are now all against us. And on top of that, he's asking for our money, charity. Because the Arabs didn't have a concept of charity, right? So he's asking for our money. And he has put us through so much trouble and hardship with this war and the battle of Badr and this and that. Put us through so much hardship. When Ka'b heard this, he felt so happy. Because here he was thinking Muhammad is a convert, right? Here he was thinking that Muhammad Muslim is on their side. And now he's coming to him and showing that no, in reality, he's just on the same wavelength as, as Ka'b. So he got really happy at this. And he goes, Wallahi, this is just the beginning. He is going to put you through much more hardship. Just you wait and you see. He's going to put you through much more hardship. And so they continued along this vein. So you understand why did Muhammad ibn Maslam have to give a special dispensation that I'm not, you know, I'm not able to say things that, you know, I need to say things that otherwise I would not be wanting to say. Until finally he said that, uh, well, now we are his followers and we cannot forsake him until the situation turns a little bit, i.e. let something happen, and then we can change and show our true colors. Until that time, I need you to loan me to pay him that money, i.e. zakat. Give me some loan, and I will, uh, and I will uh, give it to the process and then pay you back. Now